Previously on Cover Killer Nation, I was wearing this shirt and had church lady boobs. Then I flew away. Now today, I'm back and the church lady boobs are gone. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the Municipal Waste video and watch it till the end. Broken Hope! Mutilated and Assimilated. Uh, brand new album from these guys. Uh, long time history buffs of heavy metal will know this name and know it well. Uh, they have been around the scene for quite some time, but of course the lineup changes and other things such as uh, Zero taking some breaks and breaking off things of that variety have caused this project, this, uh, this band, to sort of scatter releases throughout uh, the entirety of their career. And here we are in 2017 with a brand new one. And the band's hope, the band's goal, was to deliver death metal Chicago style. Now, does that necessarily have any different meaning by comparison to death metal that's out of Peoria, either that or death metal that's out of, you know, Gary, Indiana? Not really. It just basically showcases that Broken Hope does have a bit of an identity uh, that is based around their style, and it's one that interweaves longer tracks within shorter bursts. And this is a bit admirable to do, because sometimes, all depending on the listener, this can easily disrupt the flow of an album. And I'll give you a, a, a perfect example, considering it exists right here on Mutilated and Assimilated. So first we get the shorter tracks, such as the Meek Shall Inherit Shit, either that or the Bunker, or the title track, all of which are staying and hovering within two and a half to three and a half minute marks. And it's being marked by these very uh, slimy sounding vocals that do have a lot of sort of bass and baritone behind it, sort of thrusting forward within the mouth, and is being delivered over these <coughs> very chunky uh, death metal riffs that definitely do take you back a little bit, uh, to the 1990s, they definitely thrust you a bit into that old school mold. And something about these even bleed a little bit the same way as those old school riffs, even though there has been a lot of improvement, uh, not only within technology, but within recording, that has certainly brightened them up a little bit. Somehow, even with that, they are able to sort of knock down the brightness just by the sort of sheer evil that it's able to sort of thrust out. But each of these tracks do have a really fierce identity to them, and it's well ones that are able to get you through into Outback Incest Clan and then going into Malicious Meat Holes. Malicious Meat Holes is where things get a little bit strange, considering we're popping off a five and a half minute long track. And very similarly to what we saw with uh, Dying Fetus, this could easily have been a, a spot that just sort of stop the album in its tracks, sort of destroy the pace that was made with the initial four tracks and give it a, uh, a brand new identity that was either not as good or just something completely different. But the Dying Fetus album, it did not do that. Instead, it was an enhancement to the disc that furthered its themology. Now, here on Broken Hope, this is one that sort of symbolized a turning point. Uh, Malicious Meat Holes does not necessarily take its foot off of the gas whenever it comes to what Broken Hope accomplishes with their Chicago death metal. But instead it's one that does use that extension power in order to perhaps mimic some of its peers from that time. And the one band that sort of came to mind a little bit whenever I listened to this was Death. And I got that a little bit also with some of the later tracks on the second half of this disc. So if there is isn't any sort of influence based off of that, which of course there's not, considering these guys have been established for decades, uh, but at least maybe a little bit of a tribute or just the way in which the composition sort of was handled, then hey, more power to them. It definitely helped this track feel a little bit more uh, in that classic old school vein. But then whenever you move on to the second half of the album, it is sort of like a strange identity. Uh, difference. We have Blast Frozen, which isn't even two minutes. Uh, the Necropan uh, the uh, Necropants, the Carrion Eaters, Russian Sleep Experiment, uh, that all are uh, within the three minute range. And then you get into Hell's Hand Puppets, which starts off with something sort of a little bit strange. Like, it, it doesn't really reflect the Chicago Death Metal style very well. It's almost like it's trying to enforce the idea of Puppet Master with its very sort of creepy sounding intro that then launches back into Broken Hope's bread, uh, bread and butter. It's hard to say than it looks. What this album I think really does accomplish, and it, and it does it once again uh, with uh, track 12. Uh, track 12 is entitled 
uh, Swanton Warthog, this is SIG 25th anniversary, so there is some history behind this. It's a six and a half minute long track, a reimagining of uh, something from the past, and it just, it, it crushes it. It shows what Broken Hope was all about during their initial inception back in the early 1990s, and it delivers uh, really here in 2017 the same feeling, and that's the positive of it. It delivers that same feeling. Much in the way that a train whistle, uh, if you hear it enough and it bothers you enough whenever you're trying to do things like this, will become a very familiar feeling as well. Overall, this is an album that does do a lot of things right, but also has a lot of things that are just a little bit worrisome about it. Some of the vocals are purposely uh, very difficult to understand, and based around that can sometimes be a bit, uh, a bit of an irritant, either that or a distraction to a listener. Uh, myself included, which typically that's not something that happens to me too, too much. Uh, I'm typically very vocally, uh, you know, focused until we get to open pieces where uh, guitar work and instrumentalization become absolute keynotes. Uh, for this to become a little bit worrisome and a little bit eh is definitely not a good thing. And I feel that the second half of the album, while it did carry some some strong material, also felt a very uh, a little bit cumbersome considering a lot of it sounded the same. So based off of that idea. It sort of sounded like some of the tracks were defeating the purpose of existence until you got the Hell's Hand Puppets, uh, which really carries uh, this album strong to its conclusion, with Beneath Antarctic Ice really fitting as the uh, the real sort of shoehorn between Hell's Hand Puppets and, of course, uh, the long six and a half minute finale. Uh, overall, this is a disc that also will sometimes feel a little bit bland. Um, they do have moments of superiority where everything does come together tightly and I think that the overall composition had its uh, sort of best foot forward and best idea in mind, you know. Um, it wasn't something that was trying to deliberately feel or be some par. Uh, it just sort of comes out that way and maybe it's the flow that sometimes gets disrupted for a couple of minor moments and you have to recombobulate yourself, but it is something that over many listens I noticed and it became a little bit more crystal clear and based off of that, that kind of hurts it. So this is an album that's a 17 out of 30. It's very similar in score to Municipal Waste's album that we just covered, principally because it does have some of the principal problems that Municipal Waste does where some of the material is just a bit average. And that's not a bad thing. It's still an album that for Broken Hope fans they will have a lot to be excited about. Not to mention also it's an album that bands that, or people that don't know this band, can use and utilize to discover them and discover really a legend within the field. I want to know what you guys think about Mutilated and Assimilated, though, so let me know in the comments below. My name is Cover Killer Nation, and there's a good chance I'll probably still be wearing this shirt in the next video. Block recording. Maybe I should do the whole thing with the church lady boobs throughout the entire video. Can you imagine that? Hi, my name is Cover Killer Nation, and I have large, big boobs that are actually my thumbs. I don't know, just a thought. You want to see that? Let me know. Take care.